こんにちはみんなさんキッザプルーザにようこそ Okay, this time I'm going to do Tanaka Nobuko. I'm going to do things a little different.、Uh, I think you guys have seen enough of me filing and all of that stuff. So、um, I'm going to do an introduction and then I'm going to shut the camera off, get all the prep work done, and then I'll come back for building. The other thing you'll notice is that I've, been, I've started with the simplest models in the set. The, most, the least complex builds and worked my way up to the more complex builds. So I went from models that were one parts to models that were two and three parts. And then the last two models are the most complex. So I'm saving those for last so that I can get comfortable again with what I'm doing since it's been a little while since I put things together. And I get a feel for how the models are supposed to look and how they're designed so that when I come to the complex models, I'm ready. So, I will、uh, let you guys go for now, and I'll be back as soon as the prep work is done and we actually get to the assembly. All right, I'm back.、Um, so,、uh, everything went well.、Um, I cleaned it just like all the others, same process.、Um, there are a couple of spots where, with Nobuko that, that are a little tricky, I wanted to point out to you.、Um, one. Is on the inside curl of this cloak. You see all that shiny there? That's because of the burnisher. So there was a, a line through the inside of this cloak, and I had to rub it. And when I do, I, I try to do as much rubbing this way. So I'm actually rubbing inside the creases that the modeler put into the cloak so that I'm not ruining the effect. Now, to be honest, the burnisher is not going to push down all of these ridges, but I can erase most of the, of the、uh, line just by doing this.、Um, and I couldn't think of a different way to do it other than whipping out the big tool, which I didn't want to do. I, I did some of it with the file and was fine, but in, that, in some of this I had to get the burnisher to go in there and get it.、Um, and then,、uh, I'm sorry, I, that was way off. Let's try this again. So it's right in here. There's a shiny area on the inside curve of this cloak. Is where there was a little bit of a, there was like a double line that was actually fairly deep that I had to work on to get in there.、Um, it was odd because it was more like a depression in the mold than a typical mold line. It was kind of funny.、Um, but I, I took care of it with the burnisher, it only took a little bit of time. Otherwise, he was fine. The other place I needed the burnisher, this is the left arm. And on the inside of the sleeve of the left arm, there was a, a Little couple little lines that came down, and again, because of their location, the only way I could think of dealing with it was get the burnisher in there and go back and forth. Now, you can use a burnisher, any, any rounded, shiny piece of metal can be a burnisher, so you don't have to buy a special jewelry one. You can probably go into most、um, hardware stores in the U.S. and ask for a burnisher, and depending on whether you ask some teenage kid or whether you actually Asked some old crotchety guy who'd been there forever, he probably would know what you're talking about.、Um, so, you know, just because I'm making recommendations from a jewelry store, it's because it's what I know.、Um, but I know that you can also get a lot of this stuff at hobby stores. So I would look at your local hobby store and then look at a local hardware store and see what they've got. So, anyway, we're done with that. So, the cleanup didn't take any time, hardly at all. It was、uh, a lot faster since I wasn't talking to you all the time, so I could concentrate on what I was doing. I did have to adjust the, the bar down here, it had been、uh, bent a little bit, so I took my, my parallel draw pliers and just squeezed them and twisted them gently to get them back into place.、Um, we will check to make sure he fits. Now he wants, so he wants to fall backwards, so when I glue him, I'm going to have to make sure. That I put a little pressure on him to keep him upright.、Um, I, I, I could move the bar a little bit and that would help, but I don't want to because I don't want to take the chance of breaking it off. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue. Actually, I'm going to move the card because we don't want to get glue on the card sleeve. At least Carl had, Carl, Carl had good common sense. He put it in a card sleeve so that I would accidentally ruin the, the card. While he was looking at it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put it in the back, or I'm going to put it again with a more open face forward. 
because this is where the action is. Um, especially for this one, because this model, so much of it is coming out at you that it's, it's good to have that forward. And then I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to check the bottom to see if anything came through. Doesn't look like it. And if I'm worried about it, I can just take a paper towel. There we go. And I'm just going to hold it for about 10 seconds or so. And then when I'm sure that's... Ah, see, it wasn't solid. So this is where, if I'm having trouble getting the glue to set, this is where I, I bring in the big guns. You'll just have to trust me here. All right. It dries really, really fast. There we go. So that's good now. And then we'll take this. Remember, we always want to dry fit everything before we put glue on it. There is a little square peg and a little square hole. So it's just a matter of figuring out. This one might have been smarter to glue. There we go. So say it might have been easier to glue this one before I attached it to the base. But okay, so that's you know I get a I get a feel for where the arm is pointing and how it goes in. I'll probably use my small tweezers to insert it. Plenty of gluing area, so I can just use a little bit of glue from there. Grab the sleeve. And there we are. And then I can just use the, uh, the tweezers to put pressure on that way. I don't have to worry about gluing my fingers together, which happens more often than you would possibly imagine. Here we go. So. Here we have, let me see if I can get that to focus. There we go, that's much better. Watch it refocus, does it refocus on the card? No. So, Tanaka Nobuko. Love the bow, what an awesome model, dynamic. The, I, I love the cluster of arrows coming out of the scabbard in the back and the swords. You're gonna see me play this model all the time because I just love it. I don't care how it plays. Yeah, this is why I'm bad at this game. <laughs>
with the filing because it's the back and forth bending that causes things to break off. So if it bends on you, just leave it bent. Finish your filing or whatever, scraping, whatever you're doing to clean up the model. And then when you're done and ready to put it on the rest of the model, you unbend it. So let's take a look at how this is going to fit on the model. And we'll decide whether we want to put it on ahead of time or after we already attach it to the the big thing so here's our dry fit oh see and i can still see you know it just amazes me how um sometimes mold lines can escape you where you're you've you see it you file it you're like yep i got that and then you're fiddling around dry fitting and then all of a sudden it jumps out at you again and it's like shoot okay so let's try this again uh remember the short end of the bow goes on the bottom so this one is going to go there. You know what? We're going to use this is why we have the, the tweezers. It really helps when you have big fat fingers like me to put things in more or less in the right place. Now I'm not, maybe I may have to go look up this model. No, there we go. Um, so, and, and this is actually pretty cool. See if I can get that to stay. So this model is, is going to have three attachment points for the bow, which is going to make it very strong and, and less likely to fall apart. You've got one at the left elbow, which I'm going to cover up with my thumb. You've got the, the or sorry, the right arm. You've got the left wrist, and there's even a little socket there. And then the rest of the bow comes down and either contacts the ground or contacts, doesn't look like it contacts the leg, but it will contact the ground. And you can put a little glue there and attach it at the bottom. And those three attachment points are going to be really helpful when it comes to keeping this intact. So depending on where you move the bow, if I want to move it back a little bit, then I can have it contact the leg. If I want to leave it forward a little bit, then the tip is going to contact the ground. Either way, that gets me my third attachment point. Um, I am, uh, I think I am going to attach the guy to the base before putting the the bow on because I, I want to make sure that the bottom of the bow actually clears the bottom of the base or touches it but doesn't I don't want the bottom of the bow pushing up on the model um, or forcing that the arms to be higher than they should be on the body so uh, so let's see this is the front facing more or less so I'm gonna put that there and because I, depending on how much monkeying around I want to do, I can slide him back and forth on the base. That's the nice thing about this orientation. Um, the thing with Bushido though is that when you're getting into base to base, having models with lots of sticky outy bits is a pain in the butt because they interfere with other models and you can't, like my poor alpha dog, can't ever enter in base to base with anybody because he sticks way outside of his base front and back. So I think to, to bring that under control a little bit, I am going to try for a more central spot just so I, just so I can get as much of him on the base as possible. Um, and like all the other times, I'm just going to put a little glue on the sides of his tab. I love the fact that the tabs have got the kanji on them. Even though I'm, you know, don't speak Japanese or anything, it's, I think it's really cool. All right, so I'm going to leave him there, and I've just got him on a slight angle so that if there's glue, can you guys even see that? Yeah, just barely. Let me move that a little bit. There we go. Um, so there's a, you know, he's resting on the cutting mat, and the part where the glue is is suspended over everything, and my hope is that that way it won't, he won't glue to anything. He'll just dry, and everything will shrink up, and uh, we'll be good. No, you're not dry yet. And I got to be careful. It looks like I didn't clean off the bottom of his base. And there's a little bit of a knob there. Well, I can get that later. All right. So that's okay. Um, for, for expediency, I'm going to give this a blast. Everybody hold their breath. Okay. Here we go. Nice. No, it won't set right. So what we're gonna do first, 
is I'm gonna take that big file. There we go. And I'm gonna do what I should have done in the first place to file it flat. There we go. And then I'm gonna put this down in, back down in there, in the right spot. Make sure that his base isn't sticking out behind there. And then I'm gonna sneak a little extra glue down in the slot from behind or from underneath. And that should, that glue should get pulled into whatever cracks are down there. And now we'll zap this again. So normal gluing, I don't usually use a zap gap because it is just the addition of extra chemicals into my body that I probably don't need. However, it can be really helpful when you're having something, um, when something is having trouble setting, um, it, it really works. All right, so let us, um, let's put the bow on. That's, that's what you guys are paying to see here. So I need to, now there is a little pocket for, the, for the, this wrist over here. So again, we're gonna dry fit because I can freely move that left arm or the right arm that one right there there we go and see now it, it pulls in tight along the bottom so what I'll do is I'll properly glue the top I'll let those set and dry and then I will take a, a little bit of glue on the toothpick and just put it down in there just to give me that third contact point I could even do it with the ground it's up against the ground too so um, that's not going anywhere so, once again, it depends on how confident you are with your, your, um, your gluing skills. As I am not, I'm going to put some glue on there. Alright, so we've got glue on this sleeve. And we've got glue on this sleeve, for starters. And we've got, we're going to tuck this up and in. And then while I'm holding that with my thumb, which is not going to waggle at all, I'm going to put a little bit of glue right at the bottom just to attach it to the base. There we go. Doesn't look like there's any glue on my, my thing. There isn't much. Um, Put a little bit on, one more dab. Right, right where the bow meets the leg. There we go. There. That works fine. Then all we need to do is put a little on the back for a scabbard. Again, you don't want to slop it on, you just want to put just enough. Uh, no idea what shoulder this is supposed to go over. Looks like it's this one. That would make sense. The right arm reaching back and over to, to get the arrows. There we go. Now, the only thing here is there is a little hitch in between the fletching and the rest of the shaft. And I will use my parallel jaw pliers, sneak the tip in just a little bit, and give it a little squeeze. And there we go. I tore it off. Should have done that earlier. That's okay. All right, so that'll that'll reglue just fine. Um, or I could take what's another way to solve that problem? While I'm holding it, is maybe push down a little bit. That's better. And of course, now the scabbard came off. You know, so if you're smart, once you glue things, you just leave them in place.
and then you worry about you fix your problems before you glue everything together there we go all right so that looks pretty darn good that is tanaka muna excellent figure and only 14 rice pretty cool All right, the final figure. This is Tanaka Gorak, 19-point uh, samurai with a Nodachi. A Nodachi is uh, basically a Japanese greatsword. And um, he's got the most parts of any of the models in the build. He's got four. Um, they look to be really easy to put together and assemble. Uh, in essence, you've got the lower body, which attaches to the upper body in some fashion that I'll figure out in a moment. And then, um, then you've got his Nodachi, which is awesome. And then the Nodachi scabbard. So should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I will be back shortly with the results of the prep. All right, guys, I'm, uh, I'm done with the prep work on Tanaka Gornak with his Nodachi. Unfortunately, I discovered a, a problem, and I don't know how well this will focus. That, the Nodachi, has got a flaw in it. And that's not anything I did. And I'm not certainly going to blame GCT for it. When you're, when you're casting big things like this, if you were able to see this, there's actually a fracture in the Nodachi. Um, the, so there's a couple of ways you can handle this. Um, obviously, you could ask GCT if they give you a new one. I'm sure they would. Um, in the meantime... Uh, I think what I'm going to do, and what I there's a couple of things you can do. You can flood this with glue, um, you know, spray it, get it in the position you want, flood it with glue, and then spray it, which will solidify all that glue. Let it dry to make sure that the inside stuff is solidified, and then very carefully come in and file off the excess glue until you have more or less your sword profile back. Um, but considering that this is fractured i don't think that was it's a temporary fix i don't think it's going to last i think the best fix for this would just be to break this off and actually this is what i'm going to do because i, I know this isn't going to last because it's it's you know you, you barely touch it and it moves it's just to cut it off cut this knock this last little bit off um actually i'll do it right now for you so my solution temporarily is to knock it off I could try to pin it, but it's such a tiny piece of metal. Um, I don't know that, and I'm really good at pinning, but that is such a small piece of metal. I don't know that any pin I could put there would, would hold it worth the darn. So I'm just going to knock that off. I'm going to take a small flat file, figure out where the arc of the blade is supposed to be. So the arc of the blade would be going this way a little bit. So I'm going to help it a little, just give a little bit more arc. These shouldn't be, these aren't scimitars, their arcs are very subtle. Um, they're, they're, here you go. And then the, the original tip was on an angle like this. So then I'm going to take that file and I'm just going to give this sword a new tip. Now look at that, even some of the, there's still some fracture that came off. So I'm going to have to flatten it out. So now I flattened it out. Now I'm going to give it the angle that the tip of the sword needs. So you see it's, I don't know if it's focused. Who knows, it's so tiny. Anyway, all I'm doing is I'm giving it the tip shape. And then once I have that, I need to give it its, its blade. Where's the blade? Should be here. So I'm going to then angle the tip a little bit in so that it has an identifiable point and of course the the nanachi is thin enough that every time i push it with the file it um it moves so you have to be really careful you got to support the blade as much as you can okay now i have i have bent it in my filing so then we go back to our parallel jaw pliers and we squeeze it just a little bit, just enough to put pressure on it to get it to go true again. And we're good. So my Nodachi will be a little short, but 
That's okay. Um, now, I haven't dry fit anything because I've been preoccupied with what to do with the tip. So, so we're going to, we'll do the dry fitting here together. Let me get all the stuff out of the way. All right, so how is the body supposed to fit? Um, and, and so it was a good, uh, the, you know, the body, there was very little for me to do on the body. So, so that was good. What the heck is that? Mm, I don't know. There's a big divot in the cloak. Did I do that? I don't think I did that. All right. You know what, guys? I'm going to, I'm going to pull out the big dog. I can't imagine I did that, but you know, maybe I did. So I'm going to show you how to hog your way through a problem. So what I have here is my rotary tool. It's a, the brand name of this particular one is called Fordham. It is specifically um, focused on jewelry makers and that kind of thing. So it's a serious tool. Um, it's not a Dremel. Though most of my tools that I have attached to the Fordham are actually Dremel. I got them at the local hardware store. Um, so even though it's a fancy tool, it, it actually, or it's a fancy gizmo, it works with readily available, very inexpensive tools. Um, and there are a bunch of companies that make these uh, rotary tools uh, and you can buy them at various prices depending on how much you want to spend, how fancy you want to get. You can get pretty cheap ones, uh, you can get very expensive ones. The handy thing about it is that the speed control is a foot pedal. And so the farther down you push the foot pedal, the faster it goes. So I, So what I'm addressing is something I did not see while I was cleaning it up, and I may have done myself, it's possible. Um, there is a, okay, I don't know if you can see it. There's a horizontal slot that I can fit the toothpick in right at that part of the cloak. Oh, you know what I bet you that's for? Wait a minute, I'm not fixing anything. I bet you that's a scabbard for the Nunachi. Watch, the bit. The guy who, who uh, modeled this is screaming right now. You idiot. You know, this is funny. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, because that was kind of a big gaffe for me not to pick out. And and uh, so I'm not going to fix anything. So that's what it is. That's the, the scabbard in whatever direction it sits. It sits across the back. And that... You can see that this slot here and this slot back here match. And that's because that's where the scabbard for the Nanachi is supposed to lie. So, okay, we're good with that. Let's uh, let's go back to like doing what we know. All right, so we got to get the body in. Um, the body has big contact points. Um, on the underside of the abdomen right here and over here in the cloak, that looks too suspicious not to be a contact point. So what we're going to do is, well, maybe not. I may actually have to look up the picture. This, I don't know. This fits pretty comfortably. I, I think I've found the right spot here um, with the, the cloak kind of st sticking out and circling around the outside here. But I'm going to take a moment off camera and go look up the photograph of this clan put together of the model online and uh, or the box set online and see if I can't figure out for sure how this goes together. Um, not that you can't pull it apart and redo it, but with all these concave surfaces, cleaning them out with to get the old glue out of them would take the tool that I just put away. So um, we'll, uh, we'll just go from there. All right. All right, I'm back after doing my research. Um, the body was actually really easy it just it just fits in and then this this gap here i thought maybe that somehow the rest of the body fit in that gap tightly but it, it doesn't it's just a gap so the body as long as your waist is fit right i think the rest of the body is where it should be the issue was the nodachi scabbard it took me a while to figure out uh, how to put it in because you can't tell a lot from the the group picture and of course there's no there's no detail um so I'm just going to stick the body together here, uh, hold it together as still as I can for 30 seconds or so, and hopefully that will do the trick. And then we'll move on to the scabbard. 
I did finally figure out how to do the scabbard, but it took a lot of testing to figure out. Oh, dang it. And this is why we have the spray, because you get annoyed because things aren't holding together. And you got to blast them. And... Now, if you have something like this, you've got two big heavy pieces of metal, and the, the connection between them is a smooth surface, which is not good, even though it's a lot of surface area. Um, so what I would do in this case is flip it upside down, and I'd put a little glue... Or maybe not so little uh, down the back of his pants here so that it'll flow and and hold it upside down a bit they have it flow and fill in now you got to be careful you don't put so much that it doesn't flow out the other end and cause all kinds of mayhem but back under here nobody's going to see it so i just put a little drop i'm letting it feed in to the rest of the model and because i don't want it flowing around on my fingers i'm going to nail it with this and now effectively the glued surface area is his entire butt all the way up so there's a layer of glue at his waist and there's another one all throughout his butt so he's not going anywhere um, so now that that's done let's put let's put this guy in his place again here I'm a little torn I usually like to put the front facing so I can play with the what's in front of him but because that can lead to problems getting the models to line up properly when you're playing with them, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to flip what I usually do and put him on the front edge. So here we go. I'm going to put, again, not, not a ton of glue, just a nice little bead all the way across. A bead all the way across the back. I'm going to fit it into the the thing he seems to fit down nicely again I'm I'm gonna put him on this edge um, on an angle so that if there's a little glue that gets down underneath where his tab and the base are it doesn't glue him to anything and then when I'm sure that's glued then we'll take a look at the uh, nodachi and the scabbard Everything cleaned up fine. There was very little to do, actually, other than that. that. See, the Nodachi looks fine. It's a little short, but you're never going to see it and the scabbard in... Well, I suppose you could, but, I mean, it's 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 going to be fine. I don't care. Um, you know, I'm missing about a... I don't know, what are these? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm missing about a fifth of an inch in length. Um, but... It's obviously bigger than most of the samurai swords, so it doesn't matter. Especially in the pose he's holding, the high guard, which looks awesome, by the way. Okay. So, that looks like it's good. If I forced it, pushed it around, I think I would have problems, but if I'm gentle with it. So, based on what I know, I'm going to put the scabbard in first. And I am going to try, try to describe for you how to tell how the scabbard goes in, because it's a little tricky. Um, as is leaning on this the table that I'm working on where there's no attachment anywhere below this. So every time I lean on it, everything comes forward. Okay, I so I filed this a bit, but if you look carefully, you will see on one corner that there's an area that's eaten out almost as if the scabbard has rotted away in this little area and exposed a blade underneath. And if you move up that same edge, that corner, you will come to a spot over here where these rings are that also looks eaten away. And those are the attachment points for the scabbard on the, on the scabbard proper. And then on Gorak, if you look at his back, you have the thing I almost tried to get rid of, which is this slot right here on his cloak. And then you have another slot right here. And so that tells you how this lies. So what you want to do is take the this eaten away spot on the scabbard and match it with this little spot. They're about this, you'll notice they're about the same size and shape. You want to match it in there. And then if you just very gently kind of move it around with your thumb and lay the scabbard on top of that other slot, it will eventually click into place. 
Um, and unfortunately, this is hard for me to do sticking my arms out like I am. I, I kind of have to stick my face into this to get it to, to set. But there we go. So there's that. And then I move it down. And right now I'm wiggling my thumb back and forth and the scabbard's not wiggling. That means it's set in the proper place. All right, so let's see if we can get that glued. Uh, I am, uh, am I gonna go out of the bottle? I don't think so. I think I'm gonna go off the plastic here. So I put a healthy drop of glue because I wanna be able to get a fair amount on the toothpick. And then I push it in and spin it, which picks up some glue and I put it right there. I push it in and spin it again, pick up some more glue, put it in over here. I have my scabbard. I look for my spots. So there's there's one right there. And I'm gonna match that into that. Now my fingers are probably going to get covered in glue. So to help that, I'm gonna use the tweezers to initially set this in place. And then I'll use my thumb to try to make it stay. And that's not working worth a damn. All right, so. Oh, what do you know? It did work. So, so I'm sliding my finger back and forth, and that's not working. That means I found the right, or it's not moving. That means I found the right spot. And I didn't get my fingers near the glue. That's why I use the tweezers. So, so that's really good. I'm, I'm happy with that. However, I don't trust it, so I'm going to blast it. Better living through chemicals, kids. Don't let anybody tell you different. Um, this stuff evaporates really fast, so. That way it gets into your bloodstream, you know, like crazy. All right. So now I haven't actually tried to do anything with the sword yet. So um, let's, uh, let's see how this looks. So we've got... Uh, so the sword comes back across his body. That much I can tell from the card. Um... This is my, my fingers are gonna make this really difficult. Um, so we use the tweezers again. So there's that and there's that. And this is a dense enough cast. I don't think there's any way I can manipulate this if these aren't spaced right. Um, so I'm just gonna trust that the guys at GCT know what they're doing and that the hands are spaced right. So um, I'm gonna use this again because I, I don't want giant blobs of glue where I'm gonna be putting the sword. Little blobs of glue, but not giant blobs of glue. All right, so here we go. Wish me luck, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna grab it and manipulate it right in between the two hands. I think that's gonna give me the strongest Hold. And then I gotta get the angle right. Yeah. And see now if I twist the tweezers a little bit to my uh, counterclockwise, then I'm putting pressure on both joints. Now if Carl was here, I'd have him spray this and freeze everything in place. But I'm gonna have to gently let that go. Yeah, that, that wrist is in the right place. That wrist is in the right place. So now I'm gonna hose it down. There we go. Do not try this at home. Um, or, I, you know, if I wasn't making a video, I would not hose it down. I would just set it aside and let it dry naturally. So there we go. So that is Tanaka Gorak. Um, he is the 19-point samurai. I got so many glasses on, I can't even read. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so that's it. So um, cleanup and assembly went very well. The only real problem was the fissure in the Nodachi, and that was an easy fix, um, or accommodation maybe rather than a fix. But still, uh, I, I'm happy with that. Um, nobody's going to notice. So uh, and and that kind of stuff happens. It's not, uh, you know poor quality or anything on, on GCT. That just happens. Sometimes you get you get cracks and they won't even show up until the model's been vibrated or moved or whatever. So um, so you can accommodate it. You can ask for a new one, whatever you want to do. 
uh, I want to play with these guys, so I'm just going to use it as is. Um, and uh, there you go. So, so at least you know I've walked you through the process. I believe I built these correctly. Um, they're pretty easy to do. I pointed out the areas where I found little tricky things that you might want to take care of. But otherwise, they're good. I'm going to line them up and uh, just do a closing segment, and then, uh, then I'm off to go produce this video. All right, so today, what did we accomplish? Well, we unboxed and we built the new Wolf Clan box. So let's take a closer look at each model along with card. So we're gonna start with Tanaka Gorak, which was the last model we built. Tanaka has got this wonderfully huge Japanese greatsword. Very dynamic pose, uh, really liked it. I'm trying to get in here so that uh, that where we go, we're, we're a little bit more at eye level. Next up, we have Tanaka Tsuki. This is the uh, 21 point model, so it's the most expensive model in the box. And um, again, really awesome, big long flowing co cloak. Cool hat that is, uh, as far as I know, unique, um, as, as all of these are to the Wolf Clan. Moving on, we've got Tanaka Yue. And uh, with a, with a um, Naganata. And then Tanaka Nobuko with a Daisho. Or sorry, not a Daisho, with a uh, um, Daikyu, with a bow Daikyu. Love that. Love the arrows, the, the pose, the kind of twisting pose with the bow like being pulled out from where it was resting it's just really nice and then we've got uh, Tanaka Munak Muna sorry possibly my favorite out of the whole group uh, Archer and then just a wonderfully uh, st a stalking pose um, it's terrific and then last but not least as I'm running out of battery power on my phone We've got Suki's pack, the two wolves. And what better way to finish uh, this process than with taking a look at the two wolves. So there they are. Those are your brand new Bushido wolf clan, um, allies and overall members of the Eagle clan. And I strongly suggest you take a listen to Ben Calvert Lee and Jason Enos discuss them on Ben's um, Robot Dice Explosion podcast. You will know so much more about them at the end of it than you did at the beginning. You'll have an idea how to play them, how they were designed to be played together. Um, it'll be a, a huge bonus if you guys are, are getting this particular set. Um, I will get to painting them as quickly as I can. One last thing, guys. Please um, comment on this video, whether you like this or not or found it useful. It is, uh, it went on a hell of a lot longer than I thought it was going to. But I don't know, is it useful to, to kind of have somebody go through and figure these builds out before we do them? Um, I, I don't know how much of the, uh, you know, the early, the first few models where I was showing everything. I probably won't do that from this point on just because, I, you know, once I show the techniques I use, I don't need to keep repeating myself. But, um, let me know if it was useful. I am getting the witch box. Now, I don't have an advanced copy of the witch box, but I'm getting the witch box, and I'd be happy to do the, a build video for that box. I'm also getting to go along with the witches the, um, the basic starter set for the cult, and so I could go ahead and do that. You know, so that's the question. Are these build videos... I mean, the unboxing is kind of fun, but, but for me, I think the useful part is the build video for you guys. Let me know what you think. Um, and don't worry about hurting my feelings if, if it was too long, if it wasn't useful, if the camera angle wasn't good enough. It just let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. Maybe it's something I can fix. Maybe it's something I can't. But um, the, uh, I, I think I'd love to hear from you guys to find out whether this experiment is worth repeating or refining. Anyway, that's it. I uh, hope you guys all get your boxes in good shape. Uh, and have fun with your new models. I think the wolves are going to take over the Bushido world <laughs> um, for a while anyway. 
and uh, and that'll be fun because these are these are majorly cool models and uh, with some pretty cool rules and and uh, things. So it'll be exciting. So thank you guys. Uh, I I hope this was useful, and I will uh, I'll see you next time on Gitsapalooza.